So, brand new topic. We're going to be looking at C12, uh, which is called chemical analysis. And we're going to start by looking at something called pure substances and formulations. Quite a nice start, actually, and it won't take long for us to go through, you know, 20, 30 minutes maximum. So before we start, what I'd like to have a go at is to just a bit of a recap, actually, into something we've done over the last two years. Uh, so question one, do you know what is potable water? What is meant by potable water? Question two, what is pure water? Question three, how can I test water to see if it's pure? So I've got a glass of water here. How can I test it to see if it is pure? And then the last bit, probably a tricky one, is to draw a dot and cross diagram to show the bonding in water. So you know that water is H2O. So I've got my two H's there with their one electron. I've got my oxygen with six electrons in its outer shell because it's in group six. Can you merge them together so that everything has a full outer shell? So if you want to answer these four questions, I'll give you five minutes uh, and then we'll come back. All right. And if you've got any questions, just type them into the chat. So again, if you just joined, starting by a bit of a re revision of things that you would have done. I think these are actually all year, yeah, all these year nine questions. So it's a good sort of re recap. And then we're going to start looking about what pure substances and formulations are in a bit more detail. So again, don't worry if you've only just joined and you're catching up. It doesn't matter. We're going to go through the answers in about one minute. So do you know what is meant by potable water? What is pure water? How can I test water to see if it's pure? And then draw a dot and cross diagram to make H2O. So I've got my two H's, I've got my O. Can you mash them together somehow to make a stable molecule? Okay, right, so 
we'll go through these questions and then we'll move on to a bit more uh, into this topic. So, what is potable water? Do you remember we talked about potable water last year? Well, potable water is simply water that is safe to drink. Water that is safe to drink. That is not the same as the next question, which is pure water. Right, because there's a lot of water out there which is safe to drink, which isn't necessarily pure. So tap water, for example, is not pure. Right, it's got other kind of other things dissolved in it. So pure water is simply 100% water, nothing else. So in a glass of pure water, there is nothing but water molecules. Now, this is a big question. Does anyone remember how can we test water to see if it's pure? So if I've got a glass of water here and I want to see if it's pure, what could I do to it to find out whether or not it is pure? All right. Anyone want to type any answers in? Great. That is a great answer. Measure the pH. Good. You could potentially measure the pH, although pure water and impure water would probably have the... Uh, the, the same pH. That's a lovely answer. Right. Any other ideas? No, well, the correct answer, all right, to test what was perceived as pure, is to test its boiling point, or sorry, measure its boiling point. And if it is pure, it will have a fixed boiling point. It will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. If it's a pure water, it will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. If it's impure, it will boil at a slightly different temperature, which we'll come on to later on. And this final bit, like I say, you won't be able to describe this in the chat on the, in the, in the lesson, but we've got two hydrogen atoms, we've got one oxygen. We know that water is H2O. And they're both non-metals, so they're going to share electrons. So what I'm going to do, I hope you can see, is that hydrogen, they both need to gain one electron because hydrogen's only got one shell, and the first shell can hold two electrons. All the other ones after that can hold eight. So what I'm going to do is I'll draw... What you should have... So there are my two hydrogen atoms and the two black crosses, and now I've got to put in six red dots. And then just check at the end, is everything stable? Does everything have a full outer shell? So hydrogen should have two around it to be stable. Everything else will have eight. So my hydrogen atoms have got one, two, around electrons in the outer shell. One, two, and the oxygen has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is a stable molecule. That's what water looks like. So in a glass of water, you'll have millions and millions and billions and billions, actually, of water molecules. OK, so just a bit of a recap there, because we're going to focus on this whole idea of purity, pure substances uh, in today's lesson. So. Well. So we know we've got substances, and again, you can make these notes as you go along, and there are two types. There's pure, these in a bit of detail, okay, by looking at pure substances. So a pure substance means that all the particles are the same. All particles are the same. All right. And this could be either it could be an element or it could be a compound. All right. And we'll look at the difference in those in a moment. So an impure substance is basically when not all the particles are the same, it contains different particles. And if it contains different particles, which are all mixed together, we can call that a mixture. So 
So let's just look at the difference between elements of, if we had a pure element versus a pure compound. So if we had a pure element, how many different atoms would there be in that particular element? Well, all elements are made of just one type of atom. So if I had a bar of gold, it would contain gold atoms. If I had um, a sample of carbon, it would just contain carbon atoms. A sample of tungsten, it would just have tungsten atoms. So elements made of one type of atom only. Yep. And a compound, therefore, is made of two or more different atoms bonded together. So let's take our glass of water. So here's my glass, and in it I've got nothing but H2O, 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 H2O. So in that glass, I've got nothing but water molecules. So the, even though there's more than one atom in each molecule, because if I circle all of these, each of these circles is a particle. Are all the particles, are all the circles the same? Yes, they are. So this is pure. Now, is it a pure element or is it a pure compound? Well, if it was a pure element, it'd be made of one type of atom only a compound, two or more different atoms bonded together. So you can clearly see, because there's two capital letters in each circle, this is a pure compound. Yeah. And all it takes to turn a pure compound into an impure compound, into a mixture, is just to put a different particle in there. So imagine if I was to drop, I don't know, um, let's, let's just say a, a bit of sugar, okay? So these little red dots are going to be sugar molecules. If I put some sugar in there, it's gone from being a pure compound to an impure compound or a mixture. Yeah. So it's just really important. I thought I spent a bit of time on this first bit. You know, going through this between pure and impure substances. All right. And how can you tell the difference? All right. So you can tell the difference because a pure substance, just like I said with water, a pure substance, if it's 100% pure, it is has a fixed melting and boiling point. So if it is pure, if it was pure water, it would boil at exactly 100 degrees Celsius. If it was impure, it would not have a fixed boiling point. It would boil over a range of temperatures. So here, look, the boiling point would be 100 degrees Celsius. But if it was impure, it would boil over a range of temperatures, e.g. So you see the difference between Pure water would boil at exactly 100 degrees Celsius, whereas impure water would boil over a range. So you could heat it to 100 and keep heating it to 102 and it'd still be boiling. Whereas if it was pure water, you heat it to exactly 100 degrees Celsius and it all evaporates. Yeah, so that's the difference, all right? And that's how you can tell a pure substance from an impure substance. And you're right in thinking that most of the substances you come across in your daily life will be mixtures, will be impure. Think about air, for example. All right, so let's draw, let's get rid of my glass of water. And let's get a balloon. Here we go. I've got a balloon full of air there. Inside that balloon, I've got some nitrogen. I've got some oxygen. I've got some carbon dioxide, I've got some argon, I've got a bit of krypton, might be a bit of carbon monoxide, yeah. could be uh, a bit of sulfur dioxide from pollution, yeah. 
So I've got all these different gases mixed together. So would you say that air is pure or impure? What you say is impure because it is a mixture. Impure substances are mixtures, right? They're all mixed together. You can separate them, all right? But we don't really have to because it's not gonna cause us any harm. Um, so that is an example there of, of, of impure substance again. So would you expect the boiling point? I mean, if, if I was to turn these into a liquid by cooling them all down and then start to heat them up, would it boil at one temperature or would it boil at a range of temperatures? Well, hopefully you get the idea now because it's a mixture, it's not just going to heat it. It's not just going to evaporate at one temperature. It will evaporate at multiple temperatures, a range of temperatures. And that's how you can spot uh, a pure substance or an impure substance. So if I want to, if this water was impure and I started heating it and it got to 100 degrees, and it was boiling, but it was still boiling when I got to 102 degrees Celsius, I would know it was impure. All right, so that's a nice little uh, discussion there as to why we have a, a, a different pure and impure substances out there. Okay, so I'm just going to erase this now. Okay, I'm just going to discuss what impurities do exactly to melting and boiling points. So um, you might have noticed uh, during the winter, people go outside onto the onto the pavement or onto their paths or even the roads, and they sprinkle salt. They sprinkle salt onto the road, and loads of people think that it's to it will melt the ice. It doesn't actually itself melt the ice, all right. But what it does do is it lowers the melting point of ice. So let's have, give you an example. So if I had pure ice, pure ice, zero degrees Celsius is the freezing point. But if I add salt to it, I'm turning it from pure ice into impure ice, okay? So I've got this impure salty ice and that lowers the freezing point so now the freezing point might be minus four to minus two degrees celsius so you can see this impurity has lowered the melting point it's called melting point depression so that impurity lowers the melting point. So that just basically means if it was, let's say it was minus one degrees outside. If it was minus one degree Celsius outside, pure ice would still be frozen. But if it was minus one degrees outside and there was salty ice, then that ice would have turned into a liquid, which is why people do it. They go outside, they sprinkle you know, salt all over the paths um, and the roads to lower the melting point of the ice. So impurities will lower the melting point. But what do they do to boiling points? Well, let's go with, we'll still call, we'll call it ice by its proper name, water. Let's look at the boiling points. The boiling point of pure water is 100 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna add salt to water. and uh, A lot of people do this. A lot of people do this for things like when they're boiling eggs. And I speak to a lot of students and I ask them, okay, so, why do you actually add salt to water when you boil eggs? And they always say things, oh, it makes the egg taste better. But that doesn't make any sense because the egg's got a shell. The salt can't actually get through the shell. So why do they add salt to boiling water to, uh, when, they're, when they're cooking eggs? Uh, and the answer is, is because adding salt, which is the impurity, raises the boiling point, which means that the boiling point, so it now goes from being 100 degrees Celsius to, let's say, 101 to 103 degrees Celsius. And that extra bit of temperature means that the eggs will cook quicker. And that's the pe reason people do it. All right, so it's no, no fancy reason to make the eggs taste better or anything like that. It basically raises the boiling point. So an impurity will lower the melting point of a pure substance, and it will raise the boiling point. That's a general ge generalization that, but it does work. Okay, right then.
good stuff. So that's what pure substances are. Okay. Um, so how can you tell a pure substance? It will have a fixed melting or boiling point. You see here, our pure substance, these numbers are fixed. Yep, they're fixed, they're one value. In impure substances over here, can you see, we have a range. So there's a range of melting and boiling points and generalization is that melting points will be lower than they should be and boiling points will be higher than they should be. All right, so that's what, uh, that, that's why they've got a high, uh, that's what impurities do to pure substances. All right, okay, so let's have a look at what formulations are. Okay, this is a very fancy phrase. So we're gonna look at formulations. Yeah, and I'm gonna give you some examples. So e.g. paint, painkillers. Okay, got another few on here. Uh, petrol, well, we have a diesel. Let's go with washing powder. Which other ones can we use? Uh, let's go with washing up liquid. Petrol. And let's go with tomato ketchup. So, I'm going to ask you a question now. I've given you examples as to what formulations are. Can you come up with a definition as to what you think the definition is based on the examples that I've given you? So these are all examples of formulations. So what do you think a formulation is? All right. So start thinking pure substances, mixtures, things like that. Um, and we'll come up with an answer in a moment. All right. So I'll give you one minute on that. Okay, so do we have any answers as to what we think these a formulation is? So just type your answer into the chat. Any idea? What do you think a formulation is? Yeah. Well, the definition I want to give you as to what a formulation is, is this. It is a mixture that has been designed designed as a useful product. Okay. So there are hundreds of formulations within your house, all right? So if you go into your bathroom, just pick up anything like shampoo or something, read the ingredients. Is it one single ingredient or is it a mixture of ingredients, all right, all working together? Do the different ingredients actually react with each other? No, because 
you know, that would be pointless. So a formulation is a mixture that has been designed as a useful product. Let's just make sure we're aware of this. Are all of these things here that I've labeled, are they all useful products? Are they things that we use right, in our everyday life? Yes, they are. Um, are they all mixtures? Yeah, they are. So if you actually check the ingredients, you can see that they are, in fact, all mixtures. How could you tell, though, that there were mixtures? Well, mixtures are impure, so their melting and boiling point won't be fixed. It will be a range of temperatures. A classic example would be petrol. When we looked at fractional distillation before, petrol uh, has got... So imagine, I'm just going to draw a petrol barrel here. And in there, we've got... C4H10, C5H12, C6H14, C8H18, C7H16. So we've got that mixture of molecules, all right, all mixed together, all right, for, as one product. So they're a useful mixture. It's a useful mixture. It is a formulation. But the boiling point... will be between 20 to 80 degrees Celsius, yeah? As an example, I haven't got the specific data to, uh, with me, but you can see the boiling point of this mixture, of any mixture, is not fixed. It is a range of temperatures, yeah? Some of it will boil at 20, but then some of it will boil at 80, yeah? But is it a useful product? Yes. Is it a mixture? Yes. Was it designed that way? Yes, it is a formulation. Yeah. And I hope that's been quite useful in sort of getting your head around the, the idea of pure and impure substances and how to test for them. All right. Uh, 